Good morning, everybody. I am going to show you uh, some tips for embroidering kitchen towels today. I'm Jessica from Chambray Blues, and uh, this is one of my favorite things to do. I love embroidering towels. It's a really simple project if you have an embroidery uh, capable sewing machine. And uh, there are a few things I have learned, though, that make it go so much quicker. And that's what I'm here to tell you about. So you can buy packs of towels at different stores. Um, this pack, I think, had five towels in it, came from Aldi's. It was in the neighborhood of five or six dollars, very reasonable price. These are thin gauze type kitchen towels. So you, you can embroider on those. You can also embroider on thicker towels, such as this. This came from um, Costco. It was another pack of towels that had four or five different styles to it. Those were a little bit more expensive. Um, they're thicker and a little more difficult to embroider, but it's not um, definitely doable. So anyway, I'm gonna start with the thinner towels. So before you do anything, make sure you wash your towels, pre-shrink them, get any sizing out of them. Uh, everything will work so much better if you pre-shrink. The second step is to get your embroidery design, whether it comes on your machine or off the internet, get it loaded onto a USB to put into your machine. Um, I always print off the color sheets that come with the design. So I like to buy most of my designs from Embroidery Library or Urban Threads, and they have printable pages with all the different colors of thread that you will use for the design. And I print these off and I keep them all in a binder to organize them. Um, they usually have a picture of the design right on there so you can keep track of it easy and they they're very helpful to have right next to the machine when you're ready to start embroidery the next thing i do is i go through the colors um, so this particular sheet is designed to have the color of each thread in order that you use it for the design while you're embroidering however at the bottom here this is the total number of thread uh, colors that you're going to use. A lot of them are repeated throughout the design. As you can see with the red, there's a bunch of red here, there's a bunch of red there, but it's really only two shades of red um, in the design, even though it looks like more than two appears. So don't get confused with that. So go through the thread colors at the bottom, go through your thread stash and pull out your thread. I like to line mine up in order that it will be used according to the top of the diagram. Um, next to my machine, I just line the spools up in order right next to the sewing machine. Now there's another company, um, Royal Present Embroidery, they do their thread colors this way. Uh, at the top of their design page, they will show you which one's first, second, third, fourth, like so on and so forth. And they give you the numbers for the colors of the thread, makes it really easy um, to look up depending on what thread company you're working with. There are several good ones. Um, be aware that for something like kitchen towels, you want a thread that is color fast. It will hold up to a lot of washing and you're gonna need a polyester thread for that. Do not use a rayon thread. Rayon is not as color safe and doesn't hold up to a lot of wash, um, washing the way that the polyester will. So pull your threads out, get them all in order for whatever design that you choose for your towels. And that brings me to the different designs. So for a lightweight towel, such as this one, you're going to need a design that has very few stitches. It's called an open work design. Sometimes it's referred to um, as a color, like a blue work, or if it's all in red, it'd be called red work. And you want to search for those, or you can even just type in kitchen towels on the embroidery library website, and it'll pull up the designs that are, are appropriate for kitchen towels. And this is important because a thin fabric like this cannot take a lot of heavy stitching. So if you see the difference between these two designs, this one is very um, minimal, and this one is very thick, has a lot of stitching here. The stitch requirements are different. This is 5,393 stitches, which is great for a lightweight towel. This one is over 11,000 stitches, which works for a heavier 
terry cloth towel, but not for the thin ones. I have one towel design here that I used that was even heavier. I didn't really think much about it. This is my first attempt at doing kitchen towels. This one was, I think, in the neighborhood of 25 or 30,000 stitches. And although I like the design, it's just super heavy, even for a terry cloth towel. It, you can see it kind of makes it it's stiff and uh, it's kind of awkward when you wipe your hands on it. It's not smooth and soft to use as a towel. It's decorative, but it's not real practical. And it took forever to stitch out. So you can expect a stitch count of, you know, 30,000 stitches to take you probably a couple of hours, maybe even three hours to stitch out a long time because there's a lot of thread changes involved. It might look simple, but there's probably 15, 20 different thread changes and that takes a lot of time. So for a kitchen towel project, it's just not worth it. So stick with the simpler design and read the stitch count before you decide what design you're going to use for your towels so you get the right kind of design for the towels. Then you need to choose a, um, a backing. Now there's a lot of backings available. Um, it's very complicated. <laughs> I wish it was simpler, but it's not. And they all have different purposes, which is great. So you can see these are some uh, embroidery backings. These are tearaway styles. They come in all kinds of different widths. Um, for towels, it, you can buy a smaller one or a larger one. It doesn't really matter. But the thing is, you get the right towel. Type. So this is a medium weight, which would work all right for a lightweight towel. However, if you're doing a towel with a heavy embroidery, larger stitch count, you need something heavier. So this one has got a sticky backing on it, which I use actually for most projects because it doesn't move around. It's easy to adhere to the surface uh, with the sticky stuff, and it doesn't move around on me, so it makes it really um, practical to use. However, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing like a guest towel or something like that, um, where you want a really nice finish to the towel, it's probably better to use a wash away stabilizer. So wash away stabilizers are more like an interfacing in that they look like an interfacing. They have a little bit of um, kind of a model texture to them. They're quite strong and but they're very light. So for a towel like this, I would use the wash away stabilizer. And I'm looking for my other sample here. What did I do with it? All right, so for my first attempts at towels, I used the tearaway stabilizer, which was this one, a little bit heavier because it was a heavier embroidery. And I put a piece of um, stabilizer in the hoop, like so, and then you float the towel on top. Floating is a term that we use when we don't actually put the item between the hoop rings, but we just set it on top. And it makes it a lot easier to do with an item like a thick towel. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your stabilizer, whatever kind you choose to use, into the hoop and you're going to put the towel on top. Now, some people like to use a um, spray basting to hold the towel in place before they put it underneath the machine. That works too. It does tend to gum up your needles though. That's the only bad part about it. So if you can get away without it, I recommend not using it. I like to put um, my towel on top of my hoop and then uh, use the fix function which will baste all the way around the inside of the hoop and hold it in place while it's being stitched out. It works much better. So then you can put this underneath your machine and stitch it up. I've uh, decided not to actually stitch out a towel while I'm talking to you because um, the machine is very noisy and it's quite, like I said, rather time consuming process. So another thing you can do <clears throat> if your towel has a lot of heavy pile on the top is to put the washway stabilizer on top also. And I highly recommend that. This is probably, after I've done it a few times, this is 
my favorite way to do towels is to use the wash away behind the towel in the hoop, lay the towel on top of the hoop, float it in the hoop, and then put the uh, wash away stabilizer on top and have the machine um, base it all together for you. Use the fix function on my machine, that's what it's called. Your machine might be slightly different, um, but fix it in place and it'll hold it in place perfectly while it stitches out. So those are, I think, all the uh, tips I had for you on it. I have some more videos coming up on uh, little tricks for stitching different pattern designs and so forth. So those are the basics of the kitchen towels. Oh, oh I should tell you, with the wash away stabilizer, so you notice I have this odd shaped scrap here. I would cut it, when you're done embroidering, cut it close to the embroidery design and save all your little pieces. This is a great tip I read about in um, a group for embroiderers. And what you can do with these, they dissolve completely in water. So when you throw your towel into the laundry, and, and right after I stitch my towels, I just put them in the wash right away and wash them again. And all traces of the stabilizer will disappear if it's a wash away stabilizer. But if you save your scraps, and I have a kind of a wad of them here uh, ready to go, but you can um, get them damp, wet, and lay them out on a flat surface and let it dry and it will refuse together so that you have another piece of wash waste stable I observed that you can use. It's really cool. I, I haven't tried it yet. Um, but I have heard that you can re reuse even the smallest scraps and it is quite pricey. So that's um, a great way to save a little bit of money. So be really conservative with your stabilizer. I also find that when I'm using different size hoops, sometimes the small scraps, I can put two or three of them in place and baste around the inside of the hoop and it works just fine to use the scraps the way they are. So be conservative with those because um, you don't want to, have to be running to the store in the middle of the night to buy more stabilizer. So I think that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching and I'll have more videos coming up soon. You can read more about my videos and tutorials on my website, chamberblues.com or um, look at patterns. I also design sewing patterns. So that's all for today. Have a great day. Bye.